Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode Let's Play, where today we're diving back into Australia in more ways than one as we pop on in to Elite Zoo South. I am hoping for a high quality episode today, but I do certainly want to be wary as we hop in with both feet. I want to make sure that we don't rue the day that these new animals perhaps put a ding in our economy. My god, that was either amazing or atrocious, I don't know, you let me know. Folks, what I'm getting at, if it wasn't already clear, is that today we're diving on in with a brand new Australia DLC. And I am super excited to do so. Uh, this update is bringing with it a handful of new animals. Uh, we're going to take a look at those animals and see what they mean for us uh, by going through them in Zoopedia. Uh, and then we're going to dive into some... Uh, enclosure creation for at least one of them. I've done a lot of research, I've done a lot of thinking, and I think I know exactly what I want to go for uh, in beginning our Australia section over here. The um, one thing to take note of is that South America is only being put on hold for maybe one episode. Uh, I, I just want to give an overview of this because I'm still so pleased with how things turned out over here uh, over the course of so many episodes. But we are, yes, putting a little pause on the South America section just momentarily uh, for maybe one episode. Oh, except, except to look at these guys. Oh, man, the new coats. The new coats are in. Now, here we go. I'm already just dis getting distracted by... Uh, go away. Who needs... It's fine. It's, f it's fine. We'll deal with that later. Um, oh, man. They... Yes, that's awesome. The, the coat variations apply to llamas as well as... Look at that face. Quality. Um, <laughs> I love how they look. Uh, the, the new coats that I've been talking about apply to uh, not just wolves and stuff, but also like the llamas. And, and, and there are quite a few other animals that we'll be investigating as well. But it's so cool to actually uh, to actually see it in action already. I, I was I knew in the back of my mind that it was coming to the llamas. But then I, I, as I started recording, it completely slipped my mind. And uh, and uh, and so this was a nice little mini surprise to kick things off, I guess. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, it looks so much more interesting. Just even from a distance, you can really tell. They just look so much more varied, and the space looks so much more uh, alive. But but anyway, sorry, I am letting myself get distracted. Point being, again, we're going to step away from South America, kick off the Australia section with one animal's enclosure, and then what I really want to start doing is alternating. I want to do Australia, South America, Africa. Australia, South America, Africa. We only really have two more South American animals to add, uh, if I'm not mistaken. We've got the jaguar and the Galapagos tortoise. Uh, and then after that's done, we'll be, again, then continuing our alternating between Australia and Africa. Uh, anyway, um, I don't want to waste too much time before we dive into a time lapse. One thing I want to do right off the bat, though, like I said, is take a look at the Zoopedia entries for these animals, just so we know what we're getting with the DLC, just so we know uh, what they are and who they are and how they are. Uh, so that as we start building their uh, their enclosures, we can keep all that in mind. And again, we're only building one enclosure for one animal today uh, from the new DLC, but we'll be adding them over the course of, you know, the next handful of episodes, obviously. Uh, if you're interested in that time lapse and jumping to it right away, completely understandable. There is, of course, a time stamp down below, so you can skip on over to that. But uh, I do want to, yeah, take a look at the animals, and I sincerely hope that notification stops popping up. I uh, keep having to exit away. Um... Let's begin with, of course, the one and only uh, red kangaroo. You, you can't go wrong with starting with the, uh, the red kangaroo. Uh, the red kangaroo, or Macropus rufus, is a large species of marsupial mammal that lives throughout Australia, found everywhere except coastal regions and rainforests. Red kangaroos have large L-shaped back legs and small arms, large rabbit-like ears, and a long face with a blunt snout. Yes. They are a sexually dimorphic species, meaning the males and females look different, the former being significantly larger, standing between 1.3 and 1.6 meters tall, with a 1.3 meter long tail and weighing between 55 and 90 kilograms. The latter are smaller, standing at 0.85 to 1.05 meters tall and weighing 18 to 40 kilograms. Males have red fur, hence the name, and a pale underside, as well as well-muscled legs, chest, and arms, while females have gray fur, oh, interesting, hence not the name, and do not have large muscles. The red kangaroo is prolific in Australia, so it is not necessary to have efforts in place to preserve the species. 
Sometimes kangaroos are culled to control the population, and they are often killed for meat and leather. However, hunting and killing of kangaroos is strictly controlled. Those who want to shoot kangaroos must have a license, and there is a limit to how many kangaroos can be killed each year to make sure a healthy population size is maintained. There's actually a lot of interesting stuff with regards to uh, kangaroo hunting and whatnot, and with regards to who has the right to do so, and who gets a say in who has the right to do so. Uh, lots of interesting details, actually, I've learned about uh, local kind of... Uh, Things that I'll touch on as we uh, as we you know explore some of these enclosures and whatnot. Uh, that is uh, that looks like um, oh I forget the name of the Pokemon, the one that wears a skull on its head. How am I? Oh man, it's been so long. Uh, but that, this is just, this just looks like that. It looks like a little fossil. But that's uh, pretty much yeah everywhere except for the coastal regions and this little central space over here. There are desert biomes and grassland biomes. Uh, 330 meter square land requirement, but we all know what's going to happen there. And of course, the boundary needs to be about 9.9 .9 feet high. Amazing. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Species data over here. Social needs. Red kangaroos are social animals and often live in small mixed groups. Males may be solitary. Uh, so group size is 2 to 10, up to 1 male, up to 9 females. Okay, interesting. Not not too large then. It's not like llamas where it's like, what is it? Llamas are like 30 and, and are... Uh, our capuchin monkeys are like 30 as well. Bachelor group sizes can be of decent sizes as well, so that's cool. Dominance is one dominant male per group, and they are polygynous. Polygynous? How you say that, right? Relation with humans is confident, but guests cannot enter the habitat. Oh, man. <laughs> that tells a story, doesn't it? It's so weird because I was so sure, and I might be forgetting, but I was so sure that you could enter the kangaroo enclosure at the Toronto Zoo. Now, this was... Uh, 10 years ago now, more, I think. So I could be mistaken and my memory could be fuzzy, but I vaguely either remember walking through a kangaroo enclosure or dreamt it because kangaroos are cool. Um, and I would love to walk, walk with the kangaroos as it were. Uh, we've got their size, life expectancy, weight, all that, sexual maturity, sterility actually happens well before they pass away. Wow. Okay. Interesting. This might is this actually the biggest gap between sterility and death? Potentially, uh, one offspring per mating event, eight month incubation period, eight month interbirth period. Okay, and reproduction is very easy. Oh man, I'm so excited to have little joeys like running around. It will bring me such joy. Um, reproduction: female kangaroos are polyostrous, meaning they have multiple ostrous cycles and can get pregnant at any time throughout the year. Interesting. Males detect receptivity by scenting a female's urine and urine, urine. <laughs> and when there is a receptive female nearby, may box and kick other males to determine dominance. Uh, there will usually be an alpha male in a group who gets to mate with the females until he is ousted by another male who can beat him in these dominance displays. If a female is receptive, the male will firstly grasp her tail and stay close to her for several hours to several days until she ovulates. They will likely only mate once during this time. I love the holding the tail, it just sounds like holding hands. A pregnant mother will give birth to a single joy 33 days after mating, but the young kangaroo is extremely underdeveloped and is born in the embryonic stage. After birth, it climbs from its mother reproductive tract up her belly fur to her pouch where it settles and feeds from the or teats within the pouch, remaining there for six to seven months before beginning to leave intermittently. It will leave permanently at eight months old and is fully weaned at 12 months. Around 18 months old, the young kangaroos become sexually mature and may leave their small group to join an unrelated group. So I'm really curious actually to see if, um, if, the, uh, if the game models the time the joey spends inside the pouch. Like, are we gonna have, are we gonna have little kangaroos jumping around with even littler kangaroos in their pouches. I don't think I'd be able to handle that. <laughs> that would be amazing. But I, I, for some reason, I doubt it. But let's see. Let's see. Um, but yeah, that's super exciting. Research status, of course, we have nothing. Though there is a lot of overlap with existing enrichment items. Cool. Uh, diet can be upgraded, obviously. Still, we need to research them. We'll get some more vets in, maybe. We also will need to finally get the workshop that the game keeps telling us we need, because now we finally need to unlock all the Australia construction pieces, right? <gasps> they can share spaces with qual- Okay, first of all, that's adorable. <laughs> they can share space with koalas. Okay, now I wonder if we should do that. Oh, that was, uh, 
That was unexpected. Okay. Very interesting. We don't have that many shared spaces. We have the ant eater and the Baird's tapir, of course, at Pachamama's garden. Uh, so do we do a koala kangaroo joint enclosure? I, I think I think I want to keep them separate because I have plans. Oh, okay. That's that's a that's a tough call. Uh, world records, of course. We've got uh, you know, I don't know, pixel biology. Hmm. Who are you, pixel biology? But uh, but okay, let's uh, let's transition into the koala then. And again, folks, going over all these animals first, just so we can soak them all in. Uh, and if you want to skip, then timestamps down below will help you skip around uh, as as you desire. The koala. Oh my god, they're so cute. Vulnerable. All right. Uh, the Queensland koala bear, or Pascalarctus cinereus, oof, butchering that for sure, is an arboreal marsupial that lives in the eucalyptus forests of eastern Australia. They have gray to brown fur, stocky limbs with dexterous claws, rounded fluffy ears, and a face with a bulbous black nose. Um, <laughs> it's such a scientific way to describe adorableness. Uh, they are a sexually dimorphic species, meaning the males are significantly bigger than the females. Um, that's not what sexual dimorphic really means. It just means they're different. But in this case, they're different by the male being significantly bigger than the female. Queensland koalas are between 60 to 75 centimeters long, with males weighing between 4.2 and 9.1 kilograms, and females weighing 4.1 to 7.3 kilograms. Okay. Uh, both sexes feed almost exclusively on eucalyptus leaves. Yep, that they do. That they do. The species is a vulnerable, threatened by natural hazards such as drought, predation, and bushfires. But their situation has been further compounded by human activity. Deforestation of the eucalyptus forest in which they live has caused a reduction in their numbers, and their habitat has also been fragmented by land use changes. Good stuff for us to keep in mind when we're putting down the education boards, right? Uh, they are also often killed on roads. Additionally, disease is a significant problem, with at least 40% to 52% of the population being infected with chlamydia, which causes koalas to go blind and become infertile. Well, as a famous poet of our generation says, chlamydia getting ridia. Apparently that is a situation for the koalas. Uh, as a result, populations are being researched and sick koalas are being treated and rehabilitated where possible, while there are groups dedicated to replanting eucalyptus trees for them to feed on. Yeah, the, the koala story, jokes aside, the koala story is a sad one, um, and if you'll remember all the imagery from January of this year, was that still 2020? Off to a great start, off to a crack and start 2020. Uh, Koalas were, were, were among the affected, which is actually when I initially thought the next DLC was going to be Australia uh, to, you know, try and like raise funds for all that or something. But uh, but yeah, I mean, they are vulnerable. I'm actually surprised their status isn't worse uh, in some ways. Oh, no, before 2019 fire season, man, that's so depressing that it needs to be like listed like that. I really like that they do that um, because they are so affected by the fires. Uh, but, you know, silver lining, I guess, for me personally, is I, I thought they were endangered, so it's nice to know that they're actually only vulnerable, so to speak. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I love these little tidbits. I hope you guys, I, ho I hope you all do too. I mean, let me know if for future DLC you don't want me to do this. I've taken a different approach with each DLC, uh, just to see what folks are interested in. So, you let me know down below. As always, right, comments are all read. They let me know. Uh, your personal preferences into how I approach things, of uh, of course. Uh, natural habitat, I've got, got a little, like, uh, curved space over here, so they, are, they aren't very well spread out at all. Uh, tropical and temperate. See, that's part of the reason why I don't want to share the space with the uh, the kangaroos, is because it limits some of the things we can do. Um, so I'm not sure about that. Uh, they don't need too much space at all. They do need some climbing. Oh, man, they're going to be like the red pandas. We had so much fun with the red pandas at Elitsu North. I'm looking forward to giving the koalas um, a fun experience at Elitsu South. Uh, grade 1 climb proof, 3.3 feet. All right, no big deal. Um, we can handle all that, though we'll probably end up giving them way too much space. <laughs> Species data, group size is 1 to 4. All right. Okay. Uh, it's not bad. That's a decent size. Uh, mating system is promiscuous. They are confident in relation with humans, and guests can enter the habitat. Uh, also dominance, I skipped that. Males fight for access to females. See, all this is more reason for me to build them a separate 
um, enclosure so that guests can it can be a walkthrough um, and we can we can kind of have another walkthrough experience because I feel like I feel like they're they're special they're a special kind of challenge so I, I think we're probably gonna make koalas and and kangaroos separate enclosures but again y'all let me know down below uh, size we've got over here 13 years is life expectancy sterility hang on a second how does what hey, hey hang on <laughs> wait what uh, so sexual maturity is at four years they only live until the age of 13, but they go sterile two years after they die. I'm sorry. What? Um, obviously, life expectancy is an average. I'm, I'm joking here. This is an average life expectancy, but what this tells me is that if one lives past 15 years, that's typically when they go sterile. Again, jokes aside. A number of offspring is one per mating event. Gestation and incubation period is eight months. Interbirth is 12 months. And reproduction is easy. Good stuff. Social needs. Koalas are solitary animals, but their home ranges often overlap and they will tolerate nearby koalas. <laughs> they sound like some people. Uh, reproduction. Male and female koalas both have home ranges. The larger and more dominant of the males tend to have larger home ranges. The ranges of both sexes will overlap meaning they are likely to interact with one another. Interesting. Males detect females' receptivity by scenting their urine and also marking trees with their chest scent glands and urine before bellowing when there are receptive females around. This guy bellows? <laughs> You're too cute to bellow, man. Um, okay, males of all ages. Sorry, I keep getting distracted. They're just so cute. Um, males of all ages will both seek out females, but the younger males are likely to be chased off or prevented from approaching females by older, larger males. Fair enough. Uh, when a male wants to mate with a female, he approaches her aggressively, usually using his superior size and strength to mount her. Oh dear. This often elicits a ne <laughs> The way it's phrased, I'm sorry. This often elicits a negative reaction from females. Yeah, don't say. They vocalize loudly and attempt to fight males off, but koala's sexual dimorphism means females are often outmatched by larger males. They will, however, be more likely to be able to fight off younger, smaller males. This contributes to why larger males are more likely to successfully mate. Interesting. A pregnant mother will give birth to one joey, oh, they're also called joys, between 33 and 35 days after mating, but it is extremely underdeveloped, born in the embryonic stage. Yeah, okay, I was like, does this just copy-paste it over? No, it's not. Uh, after birth, it, so, okay, in its embryonic stage, after birth, it climbs from its mother reprodu mother's reproductive tract up her belly fur to her pouch, where it settles and exclusively feeds from the two teats therein for the next five to six months. When it leaves at six months old, it will be fully weaned by 11 to 12 months, becoming independent from its mother at around one year old, or when the mother's next joy is born. Oh, interesting. Uh, young koalas remain in the near vicinity of their mothers until they are about two years old, and then they will roam farther afield. All right, that's that's actually quite interesting. Um, Again, I do wonder if we're going to have the whole, you know, baby in the pouch kind of thing. The... um. Other animals that have had relation, like, have that kind of, like, uh, physical attachment, so to speak, with their offspring has not been modeled. Like, a lot of monkeys will have their babies, not in a pouch or anything, but, you know, like, clung on to the back of the mother until a certain age and things like that. None of that has been modeled, so I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if this whole pouch thing isn't modeled either. But again, just curious, just curious. Research status, of course, we've got eucalyptus branches, of course. Uh, food enrichment is going to be a fun thing to find, uh, but habitat enrichments we've all all got uh, unlocked already. Of course, the red kangaroo, and then world records. Oh, some people are already getting to work over here. Oh, some challengers over here. Uh, all right, so that's the uh, koala and the kangaroo. Pretty iconic animals, I would say, but one cannot forget the dingo. The dingo, all right. Also vulnerable population is actually unknown. Uh, the dingo, or Canis lupus dingo, is a large species of canid that lives throughout Australia. With sandy-colored fur, a white underside, pointed ears, and a long, blunt snout, the dingo is skinny in appearance, averaging between 52 and 60 centimeters in height, and measuring 1.2 to 1.5 meters long. All right. They weigh between 14 and 19 kilograms, with males being slightly larger than females. They are opportunistic predators, but also scavengers 
resulting in a varied diet of mammals, birds, reptiles, carrion, fruit, and vegetables. Know that. Um, dingoes are listed as vulnerable mainly due to the fact that their gene pool is becoming diluted through interbreeding with domestic dogs. Oh, they're also treated as pests throughout much of Australia and are likely to be killed by farmers protecting their livestock. Fair. As a result, the species is protected in national parks and nature reserves, but otherwise are often subject to control measures by humans. I, I knew some stuff about dingoes. I uh, already learned a lot. This is why I wanted to go through all this, because um, one of, I mentioned this countless times. One of my favorite things about Planet Zoo is Zoopedia and just learning about animals. They dominate Australia. They're basically everywhere. Desert and grassland biomes. They need a lot of space. Well, okay, not a lot of space, but compared to the other animals we've looked at, they need a lot of space. Uh, otherwise, all good over here. Nothing too wild. Species data. Group size is 2 to 12. Oh, that's nice. I was worried, but I, I guess they form packs with the alpha male and alpha female. So, oh man, they're going to be like our, our wolves. I can't... Oh, that'll be... That's good. That's fun. I'm going to enjoy having the dingo added in. Uh, mating system is monogamous. The relation with humans is confident and guests cannot enter the habitat. Yeah, <laughs> not surprised. Life expectancy of 18 years. Sexual maturity at 3. Sterility at death. Number of offspring is 1 to 5. Fair. Gestation is 2 months. Interbirth is 12. And reproduction is very easy. Exciting. Dingoes are social animals that usually live in family packs, although may also live alone or in groups of 2 or 3 unrelated individuals. Hmm. An average pack contains an alpha male and alpha female, their juvenile offspring, and a litter of pups less than a year old. In a dingo pack, only the alpha male and alpha female have young, and the pair are monogamously bonded and mate for life. Adorable. Their, pup, their pups so, sorry, uh, stay with them until they reach sexual maturity. Solitary dingoes that have just left their family pack will look to meet another lone dingo of the opposite sex before establishing a territory together. If they find a partner, they mate during the breeding season and reproduce a litter of pups once a year, remaining together for life. So that begs the question, with the wolves, we had the alpha male and alpha female and a bunch of, you know, non-alpha males and females in a pack. Are we going to be doing the same thing with the dingoes? I would assume yes, and it's not like when they reach adulthood they need to be sent away because, again, this is... Uh, group size excluding juveniles. So yeah, it's got to be the pair and then their, uh, you know, their junior um, non-alpha friends, I guess. <laughs> Research status, processed meat is the base uh, food. Lots of the habitat enrichment has been unlocked. A water pool. I don't remember a water pool, but cool, cool, cool. And then uh, all the food enrichment has been done as well. Cool. No interspecies, not surprised there, and of course, world record stuff. Uh, let's see, so we've got swallows, dingoes, red kangaroos, then we also have the... I'm actually surprised at this inclusion. I would have expected... I mean, there's so many, such a unique um, um, biosphere, really. But we got ourselves the southern cassowary. These guys are of least concern, decent population, 10 to 20k. The southern cassowary is a large, flightless bird that lives in the rainforests, mangroves, and grasslands of Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, and northern Australia. They have black plumage with a shaggy fur-like appearance and robust grey legs and feet. The southern cassowary has a distinctive brown cask on top of their head. Yeah, so iconic. Um, do a brown black curved beak a royal blue throat and a pale blue crown the back of its neck is orange and it has two red wattles hanging down from its throat yeah that's what that's called um although males and females look similar females are significantly larger than males have bigger crests beaks and brighter coloration huh. male southern cassowaries measure between 112 and 136 centimeters and weigh between 29 and 34 kilograms on average while females measure between 140 and 170 centimeters and weigh between 46 and 69 kilograms on average. Although the southern cassowary is not listed as endangered, its numbers in Australia have declined by 30% in the past 44 years due to habitat loss through deforestation. They're often killed by traffic and their nests are likely to be disturbed by dogs and boars. However, conservation efforts have halted the decline due to the introduction of habitat protection in Australia 
and legislation has been introduced in areas of Papua New Guinea to stop them from being hunted. Interesting. Interesting. Now, I wonder if they are actually... Well, we'll touch on it in a bit, but we've got their kind of... It's it's nice to see that this... even I mean, it's called the Australia DLC, uh, but it's nice to see it is a bit of a Oceania DLC. Did New Zealand not get any love, actually? That would be unfortunate. Um, but yeah, we've got their space requirements. Nothing too, you know, insane over here. I'm basically looking out for polar bear size uh, requirements. That was, oh my. <laughs> the what no polar bear mafia. Though a group of, of uh, kangaroos is called a mob, if I'm not mistaken. So the mob is coming to Elite Zoo South. All right. Oh, okay. It's a small group. No dominant structure. Oleandrus, confident, but no guests can enter the habitat. They live for 40 years. All right. So they're long timers. Sterility is at 40 years as well, so if anybody lives beyond that, they'll go sterile. Uh, one to four offspring per event, two-month incubation period. That's really short, but then interbirth period is two whole years. And reproduction is average. Fair enough. Social needs. Southern cassowaries are solitary animals. In the wild, they only interact to breed. Males will care for a clutch of two to four offspring for up to nine months and then leave young to be independent. I was about to say um, a lot of these traits feel very much like the uh, the male is in charge of, like, taking care of young, and, uh, and yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, this is actually very, um, hmm, interesting how I, like, I had a feeling, I wasn't sure, but I had a feeling that it would be this kind of a, I guess, hierarchy. During the mating season, males will build a large nest on the ground, around one meter in diameter and five to ten centimeters thick, and will signal to females and rival males by booming loudly. When a female encounters a male with a satisfactory nest and or vocalization, she will approach the male. I guess it's just bird things, right? Uh, it's how birds do. The female will lie on the nest, and the male will dance around the female before mating. Following copulation, the female will lay a clutch of two to four eggs in the male's nest, and then leave the male to incubate the eggs and raise the chicks. The female may lay two to three clutches of eggs with different males during each breeding season. The eggs will incubate for 47 to 61 days, during this time, the male very rarely leaves the nest. After hatching, chicks remain with their father for approximately nine months. He will teach them how to forage and avoid predators. When chicks are around nine months old, the father will chase them away so he is able to mate again. <laughs> that also sounds like a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> Southern cassowaries reach sexual maturity at three years old. Interesting. Research status, we've got basically all their habitat and food enrichment done already. Okay, there's some food research, obviously, for higher level, higher grades of food. No interspecies enrichment, and of course, you know, we got world records. Um, so that's the koala, the kangaroo, the dingo, the cassowary, and then there is the final animal that's being added in. The eastern, not the easter, but the eastern blue-tongued lizard sitting there with its tongue out, obviously. Ooh, data deficient. Interesting. Um, the eastern blue-tongued lizard, or eastern blue-tongued skink, is a species of reptile that lives in the woodland, scrubland, scrubland, woodland, scrubland, and semi-desert areas of Australia. I'm already skink. We're gonna have to do a... We're gonna have to do a Warhammer-themed thing, aren't we? For... Oh, no, they're just... They're just little, um... Little guys, though. They live in... In, um exhibits i i assume yeah so we we can't we can figure something out sorry uh they are broad and squat animals with a triangular head and a thick tail it has various color morphs but typically has tan beige and black scales arranged in a striped pattern as its name suggests it has a bright blue tongue adult eastern blue tongued lizards are between 18 inches and 24 inches in length okay damn that's a decent size actually natural habitat yep Oh, this also looks like a face. That like, or it's like a, a dude with a very long nose. With a very big nose and a small mouth. And a, There's shapes here. Uh, and that's just their exhibit requirements. Yeah, they are an exhibit animal. One to two group size. No dominant structure. Polygynous. Uh, sexual maturity at two. Sterility at death. One to three offspring per mating event. It's very short incubation period. 22 month interbirth period, however. And reproduction is easy. Lots of, lots of easy reproduction just the one average right for the cassowary i guess the cassowary is very wary when it comes to uh reproduction while people are watching um <laughs> eastern blue-tongued lizards are solitary animals and only interact to mate or fight over mates um 
reproduction. Uh, male eastern blue-tongued lizards track females by scent during the mating season. If multiple males are tracking the same female, they are likely to meet and fight aggressively for mating rights. The victor will get to mate with the female. Males can be aggressive towards females during mating using their teeth and claws. Females may get scratches and scars from mating. Around three to five months after mating, females will give birth to an average of 10 to 15 young. The female does not care for young leaving after birth. Okay, The young are independent from birth. Eastern blue tongue lizards reach sexual maturity between 18 to 24 months old and are fully grown at around three years old when they have reached a size of approximately 16 inches in length. Um, hang on, 10 to 15 young. But I guess in game, we only see one to three for like balancing reasons. Is that, is that the, uh, the difference here? I guess, I guess, I guess that's the intent there. Research status, of course, we haven't researched any of their enrichments or, you know, layout improvements or anything like that. Dog food, insects, small reptiles, oof, leaves and fruits. But that, I think, concludes our look at all of the animals, like, sort of data. Uh, we have to consider, I mean, obviously there's a lot to look at. We have an entire new um, pack here, the Australia pack. Where's all my stuff? Show me, show me. Oh, right. Right. We're not playing in sandbox mode here, folks. We're in franchise mode, so I actually have to do uh, research to get uh, to get that stuff started. Um, yikes. Oh, it's not, it's not going to stop us because the plans I have, we should be able to execute without needing specific construction pieces, though we will get that started uh, today as well. I just want to see if uh, we have access. We should have access to all, like, the... Uh, the trees and stuff like that yeah so we can actually at least um trade out some of these african trees that we're using right now for for more appropriate you know, gum trees and yeah there we go eucalyptus trees yeah that's feeling a lot better that's a lot better cool 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 certainly feels more uh, more appropriate but that stuff to consider we looked at uh construction items we'll have to do research for it all good all good Habitat, I guess it'll just be the animal enrichment things. All right, fair enough. Any barrier types or anything? No, I suspect not. Uh, okay, well then, in that case, let's just very quickly, in the space back over here, set up our workshop, right? Um, those of you who are joining just because you're watching DLC stuff, uh, there are, yes, parts of our of our zoo that are uh, skeletoned in, I guess, and parts of our zoo that are a lot more uh, complete, but uh, <laughs> that's because of our... Financial circumstances at the beginning of this let's play. Let's put it that way. Uh, where do I want to put this workshop actually? Because this is all going to be underground, so I'm not too worried about the layout visually. Uh, but it is nice to. I guess we could put it over here just to like hook up to this. Sure. Uh, facilities. I can't believe we've managed to wait this long before we put a workshop down. But I mean, it makes sense. We didn't really need one until right now. Yeah, pop you down over here. Why not? I'm going to put anything else over here. We've got Keeper Hut. We've got the staff room that the African section will rely on heavily, I think. Yeah. So let's go ahead and pop you down over here. Doesn't cost us all that much. Just a thousand. Let's go ahead and get uh, research going right away. Yeah, see, we've we basically done everything. You, the fourth tier, just for those of you that are wondering, the fourth level of research on themes is just to unlock more blueprints, which we basically never use um and habitats i thought we researched all the habitats oh right it's just blueprints which again we just we never use so australia which is gonna have some very interesting you know pieces that i cannot wait to use let's go ahead and get sally devos researching and let's actually go ahead and hire some more mechanics so we have somebody out and about getting getting work done i should have realized that last session and i should have hired a mechanic uh in preparation for this inevitability go ahead and pop you down over here I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that our old mechanic was, yeah, no work zone, free to go wherever. So Eva, hopefully you'll, uh, or Eva, Eva, yeah. hopefully you'll, you know, be able to keep up. We'll rank her up as, uh, as the opportunity presents itself. Anyway, I think I've rambled on for long enough. I think I've delayed the time lapse for long enough. We have about 125k, so financially we're okay. Uh, my intent is, yeah, to, to build our first enclosure over here. Uh, technically, we already have our first Australian enclosure. Again, for those of you that are maybe just joining or 
just as a refresher for everybody, this is the saltwater crocodile enclosure, which also needs a lot of work. We will get that work happening as soon as we've done some research on construction pieces. Um, so we've already done our first Australia piece, but uh, but I feel like there is a particularly iconic animal that needs to be added in first, at least in at least in my mind. Hopefully, y'all don't disagree. Let's uh, let's go ahead and dive on into the time lapse, and uh, just as a bit of flavor that I want to mention. Sorry, we have our our uh, our down levels over here. Like you go down into the ground over here. We have our raised levels over here. So you know you go up, and then you have everything's going to be raised over here for the Africa section. And Australia, I think, is going to stay on the level. So we kind of have you know low, mid, high spread across the zoo should hopefully give us a nice uh, visual variety. But that's the last of my rambling and delaying and fascinating folks. It's time lapse time. All right, folks, I hope you all are ready to hop on in with some outside the box thinking because literally I throw squares out the window for this one. So no boxes. Um, Well, except for the boxes the kangaroos that eventually you know come in. But listen, that's that, that's besides the point. I did so much research uh, leading up to the drop of this DLC. I did so much learning. Uh, I've I've learned a tremendous amount about sort of indigenous Australian aesthetic culture, some symbolism, things like that. I, I I'm fascinated by all these things that I did not know about, and I'm so excited to just share my learnings and to learn more. I want to say right off the bat at the beginning of this time lapse, folks, if I uh, have anything uh, incorrect or if I've misunderstood anything in my learnings and you know better, as always, feel free to correct me in the comments down below. If you know uh, any inspiration that I could look into to further my knowledge and further our exploration uh, at the zoo, let me know in the comments down below. But uh, for now, I want to talk about what we do for the kangaroo enclosure uh that i'm i'm that i'm so excited to share because again this was my kind of first deep dive foray into an entire world uh that i didn't know much about until you know <laughs> today kind of if i'm completely honest uh so i did take a lot of inspiration in uh form and and aesthetic looking at indigenous australian art now of course there is not one cohesive look that goes across the board uh, so I, I try to stick to one quote-unquote brand of it and even then certain you know symbols and things like that have different meanings in different contexts or among different peoples uh, so I, I am trying to kind of navigate that space appropriately and hopefully I've done so um, the first thing is uh, I, I, I kind of did a deep dive into the concept of uh, dream time uh, is I believe the term for it, which refers to sort of a pre, uh, like a like a pre time basically when the world didn't really exist in its current state and and it was being developed by um, not gods but godlike figures I suppose, and that's where a lot of mythologies come from, like you know where the kangaroo got its tail and. And things like that. So I've been I've been deep diving into that as much as possible, and and trying to get a knack for the uh, artistic elements that often go along with uh, Dreamtime uh, paintings and and murals and things like that. Uh, so I, I've been I've been trying to pull like uh, from from that world as I build this space because apparently the kangaroo is a pretty prominent figure in, or rather during I suppose Dreamtime. Uh, so one of the one of the prominent symbols in this uh, in in indigenous art in general, and I don't know if it's exclusive to uh, to Dreamtime art or if it goes beyond that. Again, I'm still learning here, so pardon my you know uh, rough roughness around the edges, so to speak. But one of the most important symbols and most commonly recurring symbols is that of the concentric circle. Um, they have a variety of meanings, but typically. Uh, it is known to mean or represent a specific location, uh, such as a watering hole or a uh, meeting place, just a, a place for people to uh, come together. Uh, oftentimes, you'll get concentric circles with other symbols around them to represent it's where uh, it's like a campfire and, and things like that. 
Um, so I, I'm, I'm kind of pulling from that. And of course, you'll notice that these concentric circles are, as we lay them out, uh, imperfect. And it was actually a bit of a challenge getting them to be perfectly imperfect because I wanted them to look like they were references to the art, in which case it's not, they aren't, you know, they're not drawn with a compass um, or, or, a, or a hard edge or whatever, but they're they are drawn uh, in a much more natural and organic form. So I've tried to go for that. And obviously, as you can see, I'm kind of struggling with getting it to be concentric circles, uh, but not necessarily hard circles, you know, going for like you know, a little bit of wobbliness here and there, if you will, just to give it that kind of more natural feel. But that was the core uh, uh, of the of the overall layout over here. And you'll see, you know, between the grasses and the paths, it's all concentric circles to create one um, meeting space, if you will, uh, to see the kangaroos. Uh, now, is this space way too big? Well, yes and no. Um, I measure a couple of times uh, you know, by putting the barrier down and, and seeing what the area is, is, is considered to be and comparing that with what the kangaroos actually need. And it is uh, enough space for three, I think maybe four kangaroos to live comfortably, which is where I wanted it to be. Uh, as far as for people, because you're traveling in circles over here, uh, it is yeah a bit of a distance, but I do have some ideas and some solutions that I actually touch on after the time lapse. So I'll leave it for a future past party elite to, to discuss all that. Over here, as you can see, we're putting down one-way glass barriers. Now, uh, after the time lapse, I do swap a section of it to being regular glass because I feel like the animals should have a view of the outside a bit more clearly, and they are confident with humans if memory serves. So uh, I figured, you know, why not why not go that route? But for starters, I do the uh, one-way glass, and then I actually use this second inner uh, viewing platform as a hard shelter as well because I felt like it'd be a nice way to integrate it into these concentric circles without introducing too many outside shapes. So we've got our outer path, we've got our inner path, then we've got our innermost path, and then we have the little ring of, uh, of logs in the middle, uh, which makes up our uh, set of concentric circles, again, which represent a, a, a meeting place. Uh, beyond that, or rather after that, I begin to insert, uh, again, this is where I kind of have to, you know, for the fact that it's a game it's got it's we've got mechanics we need to fulfill i start to kind of interfere with these circles a little bit but even then i wanted to integrate some shapes so there is a uh sort of a u shape which is used as well to represent people and from my understanding the u shape on its own uh represents just people in general whereas the u shape with tools next to it represent man or woman um so i went with a generic i wanted it to be just you know people in general uh, and what often is done is concentric circles are surrounded uh, with these little U-shapes at the cardinal points to then make the concentric circles or to make the collective thing mean uh, like a, a camp or, or I believe that's also another way of saying a meeting place. So, you know, just just trying to like balance all these like symbols and stuff. I, I was, I, I'm still like just, I'm so excited uh, to be learning and, and exploring this new stuff. It's, it is a whole new world to me. So maybe I get a little carried away in certain aspects and certain times. Uh, so stop me if that's the case, but I couldn't help myself. Um, really like just, it was, I was, I, I felt so, so excited. Uh, so, so yeah, do call me out if, if necessary and, and do correct me if, uh, if need be as well, because again, I'm, I, I am just learning. Um, so yeah, so we've got the concentric circles, we've got the little U shapes that represent people, and the idea was that people would sit at the U shapes, which represents people. Um, so I thought that was kind of like a nice little, you know, uh, tie-in there, if you will. Uh, and then beyond that, I might actually change the shape of the water to actually go with what is typically um, used in these same, you know, art uh, pieces to represent uh, represent flowing water. Uh, but for now, it's just kind of there to, uh, to to remind me of my plan over here with the waterfall on this side and using that as a source of clean water in the uh, the kangaroo enclosure and introducing yet another circle uh, for these concentric circles. Uh, next, you can see me just kind of, I, I, I'm pleased. I was looking at it from over top, just being like, am I happy with the shapes? Do I want to adjust or tweak any of them? Um, and, uh, and no, uh, but I did want to add another element again, introducing some more concentric circles. I thought maybe it'd be interesting, uh, again, right. It, it represents, 
um, campfire meeting place, all this kind of stuff. I was like, oh, let's 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 play on that a bit more. Let's riff on that a bit more. Um, and uh, and really, the level of intricacy of these uh, art pieces as well is something that I I won't even get close to mimicking uh, because of technical limitations. It'll start lagging the game, guaranteed. Um, so I thought let's let's at least try where we can. Um, you'll notice also the pathing that I'm using over here is one of the new pathing pieces. It also has a lot of concentric circles, and I can only imagine that uh, that that's a, a a constant kind of piece in uh, in other ways in this in this art form as well. Now this that I'm putting down over here is actually a symbol for the kangaroo, and it's a reference to the tracks a kangaroo makes as it uh, you know goes through goes through the land. So a lot of time in these art pieces, you will see kangaroo. Um, tracks leading kind of through uh, the art piece and whatnot, if I understand it correctly. And so I thought, well, it'd be nice to have, we have markers for people, we have markers for meeting places, let's also put down the markers for the animal itself, the kangaroo, and uh, what we end up doing afterwards is we end up putting um, like feeding spaces or toys around those uh, markers to kind of represent like the kangaroo is here and, and here's the kangaroo in, in, in reality. It's literally standing right here as well. Uh, I just thought it'd be a nice kind of like meta um, application of, 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 of the symbol, I suppose. Uh, putting down a bunch of donation bins, really realizing how large I've made this space. Do I regret it? Not at all, because we'll figure it out. We'll make it work. Uh, we'll make it work. What I did need to do though in order to make things work is get power in. Um, and here you'll notice a lot of a lot of these pieces are going to be floating right now. Uh, I do intend to make them not float, but my thinking was, you know what, we're gonna do the mechanic research, the workshop research on the Australia pieces. We're going to get access to new Australia pieces. Uh, maybe we'll have something that'll make the floating like that'll allow us to build support structures that uh, aesthetically fit the bill, rather than just putting logs down everywhere. Like we've already done a lot of the using the generic log but I wanted to just hold on to the floating for a little bit because all we have to do is research one tier of uh, of the you know mechanics research and, and we'll be able to, to use Australia pieces. So I figure let's, you know, patience is a virtue, right? Uh, now, the other thing that I was thinking of doing was underneath this outer ring, uh, we would put down some, uh, some vendors and, and washrooms and things like that. Unfortunately, I couldn't tell exactly why. This always happens with curved paths and me, um, but I wasn't able to uh, to to just place things around the outer or around the middle ring, I suppose. Uh, so instead, I had to kind of dance around it a little bit, and it's it's unfortunate that I had to come up with an alternative solution. However, with that said, it's not like I don't like the alternative solution. It still looks good. I'm still quite pleased with uh, with how it comes together. And, uh, and how it functions. So we do put down some new stalls. We put down a washroom as well as a, uh, a spot for people to drink water because that's a very common, <laughs> that's a, that's a, it's a, it's a top seller. Let's put it that way. Uh, so we're, we're going to put that down right now. And, and um, we do a couple of things over here um, to try and make the space a bit more interesting. I'll probably be adding some more vendors as well, but that's something we'll do later. Here again, I'm trying to line it up with the, uh, the circles. And I'm also going to put down a uh, picnic table or two just using those modern pieces for now because we can always cover them uh, or the new world pieces I guess they are uh, we can cover them they look rather generic they blend right in we'll unlock the Australia pieces and we'll see how it looks I'm also gonna put down a sprinkler over here because it's gonna be super hot so let's get that sprinkler in and, and you know, rather than just dropping the cooler down make it a bit more interesting and we're also gonna drop down cameras as well I, I was staying on top of things I was like in my in my head I had a mental checklist of everything I always uh, miss and have to wait on the comments to be like hey party you forgot to do this um, so I kind of use my mental checklist to put down cameras I put down do not feed and do not disturb signs even though we shouldn't need do not disturb signs because again the animals are confident with humans I figured why not let's get it in there you know make the animals a bit happier starting to put down some like toys and things as well lowering the little concentric ring in the middle over there because i felt like initially the idea was the kangaroo would hop over to get access to water but then it felt i don't know i was like let's i was going back and forth about it a little bit and keepers need to be able to access that space as well right doing a little mini mini tour for myself planning out the movement of my uh well i'll touch on that after the time lapse so i'm not going to mention it now but uh just just figuring out how people are likely to use this space and then also wanting to get trees down as well. I was like, why? What's missing here? And, and what was missing was, was trees. So uh, desert and grassland themes. There are some beautiful trees. And I thought, you know what? We talked a lot about shade. Uh, so let's go ahead and get some shade in for these little, uh, you know, seating spaces and whatnot. 
I'm quite pleased with how it looks. I think I will add, well, I'll definitely add more trees as well. But for now, that's the time lapse, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse. And uh, once again, in classic Party Elite fashion, I think we have taken up more space than I'd initially intended to with this design. But I'm not going to lie, I'm still quite pleased with how it's turned out. And I'm sure we'll make it work. Uh, I'm sure I've touched on all of the little uh, design elements and justifications and ideas during the time lapse, so I'm not going to belabor that anymore. Let's go ahead and get the animals in because, I mean, it'd be a shame to have done all this work and then not get the animals in this session, right? Let's go ahead and get them in, see if they're comfortable with the space. Uh, I just want to make note in case I didn't or wasn't able to during the time lapse. Yes, there is a fair bit of floating going on right now, but fear not, we will be building supports and ensuring that these structures don't continue to float uh, because uh, we, we want to go for some you know more realistic looking constructions and whatnot. But my thinking was I'll wait and see what Australian pieces we uh, come up with with our research, and then we can you know more thematically match the 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 constructs potentially. We might just end up going with these. Uh, classic old-fashioned uh, logs that we've been using in, in certain spots over here, but we'll we'll see about that. The other thing I want to touch on really quickly before we get the animal in, actually, I take that back. Let's get the animal in first because we got to put it into quarantine first. So over to animal trading. Let's go ahead and uh, go to the animal market. Oh man! Oh, you can actually there. Are they all the same? Oh, they are all the same. Males versus females. I was I was gonna say this like oh you can see the patterning in the um. Uh, in the animal market, but I guess I guess not. Uh, all right, down to the red kangaroo. Let's see if there aren't any good ones to be had pre-release. Of course not. Oh, really? Only females available? Come on now. Come on now. I need I need me a breeding pair here. Uh, ooh, these are not bad stats. Fair enough. Let's go ahead and pick you up, Denali. Adopt you. And Noah Lingu as well. I'm actually curious if you know or recognize the name um, source, culturally speaking, uh, I'm beyond the blanket statement of, ah, yes, Australian indigenous. Let me know. I'm curious. Um, and if you know any meanings and stuff, because typically there are, you know, names have meanings. I'd love to, I'd love to know. Please share. Uh, but I am unfamiliar with, uh, with these. Now, this is also, it's not terrible. Oh, it actually straight up tells you what their uh, what their um, thing is going to be. Orange, gray fur, and pale underside. Gray fur and pale underside. Ah, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, that's great. Um, that's great. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to figure out if I want to go ahead and pick you up as well. If we go to here, it's 2 to 10, up to 1 male, up to 9 females. All right, so having multiple females is not a bad idea. And again, they're not the greatest stats, but they're not bad either. Didn't we already pick you up, Denali? Are you going to make me do this again, just in case? I mean, I'm not going to... Okay, I've already adopted this animal, yeah. Uh, these two don't really have the best stats, but that's okay. I mean, the Trade Center is only... You know, right now it's only being used by a handful of a uh, handful of people. Uh, I'm sure we'll have access to better uh, genetics down the line, and, and, and beyond that, it's nice to kind of take on the challenge of, uh, of upping the genetics ourselves. Now... Over here, we should have, I mean, basically right now, keepers from over here are just working on the, uh, on, on Croc Rock. Uh, so I might, uh, I think I might keep that focused on Croc Rock and our kangaroo enclosure, for which, by the way, I need name suggestions. So feel free to drop them in the comments down below. Um, later on, I might add another keeper hut and, uh, just, you know, keeper things, I suppose, somewhere out over here, a bit central to where the Australia expansion is going to take place. Man, this is huge. I mean, again, to be fair, the enclosure is a small part of this entire uh, interactive experience. But yeah, we'll probably put the keeper hut and stuff somewhere up over here, uh, have like a nice keeper space over here. The other thing I want to touch on is, um, well, let's go ahead and hit play, right? Because we've got the animals coming through. Well, actually, first of all, sorry. I keep distracting myself because I've I've got so many plans. I just want to share the plans. And to those of you who haven't been watching the series up until right now, be warned, the animal storage has... Uh, it's got animals in it. <laughs> it's got animals in it. Some of them are from our other um, from our other zoo, though. So that's fair. Huh? Hang on a second. What? Animal storage. Yes. Oh, I guess they'd be in the... Uh... Why are you? Where are you? Why are you? Okay. Okay. Hold on. W wouldn't they be? Am I? Am I? 
tripping that hard right now? Wouldn't they just be in uh, in storage? I guess I have to unpause for that to happen. Sure. Let's uh, let's go ahead and hit play. Keep an eye on some of these warnings as well. Budiwati is going to be. Well, one of them needs to go out, right? I, I forget who it was. But we're gonna have. Okay. Look, wow. These are good stats. 50, 92, 83, 67. Who is mum? Who is mum? I, I remember she was pretty good in terms of stats as well. Go ahead and take a look over here. Oh yeah, she's she's better. <laughs> she's better. So Budiwadi needs to go as soon as uh soon as she matures, which will be after she gets out of the water, so we'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at animal trading. Let's take a look at animal storage. We should have where are my kangaroos? Oh, I've got llama checked over here. No, 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 no. That's why. That explains it. Red kangaroo, please and thank you. There we go. Move over to our quarantine, please. And again, trade center to quarantine. Such a small, short trip. And Denali, let's get you up in here as well. And as that's happening, I'll touch on my other plan. So uh, those of you, again, uh, m some of you might remember that the plan is to have a monorail Potentially over here, it might end up elsewhere, we'll see, but potentially over here in South America. Uh, going up and around, dropping people off at the entrance of our Africa section, and then it'll continue onwards and... Ooh, we should check in on this stuff. Call the keeper over here. I'm gonna get some issues over here. One thing I am concerned about is... Um, okay, what's up with your space? I'm concerned about updates. Um... Sometimes they'll cause, like, issues. Uh, like, they'll change how certain things work, and that might cause issues. Now, space over here. Not enough space, really. Um, hmm. That's... I've, I've never had that as an issue. We might open up some more room back over here. That is an option, obviously. We'll keep an eye out for that. That's actually hurting their happiness quite a bit. It's actually hurting their happiness quite a bit. Um, let's see. What can we do over here? Go ahead and nudge you back a little bit more. Ooh, don't do this to me, gang. Hold on, let's go ahead and save the zoo real quick. Deselect, that's all I want to do. Seems this, uh, this part of the zoo is still, uh, a risky place to, to play around in because of the, the, the climbing structures and whatnot. Let's go ahead and pull you back a little bit. Over to, say, here. Sure. Just for now, just temporary. And we can pull you... Down over here, I suppose. Kind of opening this space up a little bit. And let's go ahead and get just just adding a little bit more room for the uh, for the monkeys. We could put a little like water feature down over here. I know we talked about that previously. Might do that still, but for now, let's just uh, drop some rocks down to to. Make quick work of it. I don't. I don't want to have unhappy animals just because we're focusing on new animals or anything like that, right? That feels feels like an inappropriate decision. I, I'd rather put together a quick solution and we'll do a proper solution afterwards. Um, okay, got all of our bases covered here. We'll probably cut this off up over here. That should be more than enough added room for uh, for the monkeys. Budiwadi is about to mature. Well, let me know when that does happen. I don't want to have the animals fight, but it might be inevitable because it's hard to predict when they'll be in and out of the water. I'm looking forward to completing Croc Rock as well. There we go. Um, because, again, it'll... it'll um, That was a lie <laughs> that she's matured. Um, it'll it'll look so much more... It'll be nice to have our entrance area actually completed. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to have that done. Um, let's go ahead and move you down over here. It's funny how the space is still so... Um, We'd fixed it, and now it's uh, it's being a little laggy again, which is unfortunate. All right, let's go ahead and see what our monkeys are saying. You guys feeling any better? Feeling a lot better in terms of space. Okay, good. Can you escape? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. How can you get out now? Able to get back over there. You're able to climb back there? Okay, that's a problem. That's a problem. Peel that off. Go ahead and see if that did the trick. Where'd the monkey go? I'm surprised I actually managed to click on them. Ooh, this isn't good. This isn't good. How are you able to... Why? <laughs> we solved this issue. Now we have it again. 
I don't think it's because of what we just... It must be because of what we just did. Hang on a second then. Put you back down over here and seal this area off. Moment or two. Again, it might just be because of updates, right? If that doesn't solve the problem, we'll, I think we'll investigate later because I do want to get our new animals in. Yeah, see, we've blocked that off. Still managed to get over. I wonder if like their jumping and stuff has been adjusted so they can actually clear bigger gaps now. Which, uh, fair enough. We will... Uh, that doesn't make any sense, though. All right, let's go ahead and undo some of these changes here. Bring bring the rocks back out, and then we'll uh, we'll deal with the monkeys next time. <laughs> Make sure they're all all properly patched up. For now, I just want to at least uh, take a look at the uh, kangaroos. Get them in there. See them in action. Come on now. The game's recalculating the uh, the climbing structure every time we undo something. Uh, that should be us back at square one. Let's check. Where is the monkey? Are you a monkey? Or a monkey? You're a sleeping monkey. Still got an out, eh? Undo, bring the tree back in. I guess that, that can be our marker when the tree comes back in. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, alright. We'll, we'll take a look at it later. We'll take a look at it later. Let's go ahead and get our kangaroos in. Quarantine passed. Alright, good stuff. These guys, low welfare. Let's get the keeper in there. Come on now. Come on now, let's get you two moving into our, again, kangaroo enclosure, which does need a name. Uh, by the way, this, these things also need a name. We have a washroom. We've started, we've started naming washrooms. I mean, I don't know. Kangaloo comes to mind, but if you've got a name suggestion, drop it down below. And we also have a new water um, stall. We'll get more things placed down over here as well, but, uh, but for now, it's just uh, just those two things. Um, and right, right, right. So what I was touching on, oh, did I already... Well, so we've got our, our monorail. It's going to come from South America uh, over to Africa entrance, over to, I think, over here specifically. So it'll drop people off. They'll be able to see the kangaroo from up over there. They'll be able to go down and, and, and grab a drink and whatnot. Uh, but they'll also be able to uh, continue onwards and check out the rest of Australia. That's kind of my thinking, which is why I'm fine with the size of this. So yeah, it'll go from pretty far out. It'll end up being the middle of South America over to the entrance of Africa, to the middle of Australia sections. I think that'll uh, that'll do the trick. Ah, uh, yes. I'm actually quite glad that we got to see uh, Night Animal has escaped. Ooh, monkey. Oh, of course. Of course. Gonna capture you. Why? How? Why? And is that gonna keep happening all day today as we, uh... as we deal with things here? Angroos are arriving. Is it because of this? Because they're able to jump? It might be. You know what? That might have been it. Let me just one check here, and then we can go and take a look at the kangaroos. They've arrived. I need to do a few more things, obviously, as well. Let's look it out over here. And getting out is exactly what they're doing. Wish I'd seen how they'd gotten out. Yeah, I was about to say I gotta, like, assign keepers and stuff. Let's go ahead and take a look at our zoo, our... Oh my god, uh, staff, work zones. And just for now, we're going to add to center all this stuff. We're going to make a new thing soon. But for now, at least, let's go ahead and add that to center. And, uh, and let our... Let our, uh... Why is none of this assigned, actually, to center? That's weird. Let our keepers and stuff all, you know, manage that from, from the central section. Because the central, central section right now only has the, uh... Oh, what a crocodile's. I mean, at least people don't mind when this animal escapes. They're not running away and asking for refunds, so that's promising, at least. Uh, so I guess we don't have to worry as much. We just escaped. You know what? I think it is, in fact, these uh, these turnstiles no longer work. Seems to be the case here. Let me see here. For now, if I go ahead and pop these rocks down, will that solve the problem? If it will, great, but it means we have a problem. Uh, again, one that we'll fix next time. There's a little lag spike to let us know that the climbing platform has been recalculated. Where is... A monkey. Come on. Not, nope. There we go. Yeah, I feel like it's this. Alright, well, we'll uh, we'll sort that out next session, I suppose. For now, I want to kind of stay focused on uh, on things over here. Like, again, I'm really happy with the, the lighting actually working out. This, maybe it's a little too bright. Attack cleanliness is at least risk. 
well, this was a problem previously, but uh, hopefully it'll get fixed soon. It might just be, again, because of slight updates here and there. Uh, it might not be a bad idea either to hire a couple more keepers and things like that. Um, preparing food, good for you. I workload in South America. I mean, you've got so many people helping you out. Let's go ahead and get some upgrades going first. That's always the first step. We'll see if that helps. And if not, then we'll hire some more people. Um, but yeah, let's see if we... Light mode automatic. Right, right, right. Because you can now customize if lights uh, are on or not. Um, and, and if they're on throughout the whole day and things like that. So that's... Uh, I'm very happy to see that too. But let's see if we darken you a bit. Of course, I only selected the one in the middle. There we go. Other editor. If we darken you a bit, no, no, that's not a good change. That's not a good change. I should be able to edit them all. These guys are one group. No, 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 that's not good. You used to be able to edit an entire group's colors all at once. What if I do it this way? There we go. Okay, so they've, 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 just, they've just changed the method. Mm, too dark. You know, I actually kind of like the brightness level as it was previously. Maybe, maybe that's fine as it is. Maybe that's fine as it is, especially inside. I really like how that looks. Uh, okay, but let's go ahead and take a look at the animal, actually. Enough dallying. Where are... That's dark. How you doing, buddy? Denali. Happy across the board. Excellent. Terrain, happy across the board. Oh, yes, there we go. Happy across the board. More like your... Yes. Playing some Australian Rules football over here. Again, I'm aware that this is not the type of football used for Australian Rules football. I am just joking. A hard shelter, good terrain, good. Everything's good. Awesome environment, good. They like their trees and everything. Enrichment maxed out. Yes. I love I love when a, when a build works right off the bat. Hopping around. Oh, actually, I want to check one thing here. Whoops. Nope. Hey, hey. There we go. Uh, I want to check habitat uh, traversable area. Beautiful. Yeah, they've got access to everything. The one thing I wanted to experiment with was the height of this. Can they... Like, I have to be careful because um, keepers need to be able to access as well. But can they hop over? Nah, they can't. Okay, they can't go that high over. All right, all right. A little bit more of an experiment here. How about we go half height? What about now? Yes, they can hop over that. Which is an interesting thing to consider. Let's do something like this and see if uh, if they use they use the the hop. Oh, beautiful sunrise! Come on now. Look at that. Look at. Sunrise off in the distance over there. This rim lighting on the fur is beautiful. Got a little pouch over here. Is it a modeled pouch? It looks like it has the little, like, um... Just chilling here, eh? Chilling like a villain? Yeah, like you can see over here, there's like a little... It looks like the model goes inwards. God, I'm hoping... I hope I'm looking at the pouch there. <laughs> Let's zoom out. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm so curious about the whole, uh, whole baby thing. You're just chilling out over here? Having a good time? They they look so relaxed. Oh my god. Living the life here. Living the life. Look at that animation. Oh, that makes me so happy. They're so cool. Oh. People are coming through already. Yes, they are. I gotta get, like, education boards and stuff down over here. Donation bins. There's There's so much work still to do. Uh, to get uh, to get even just the kangaroos up and running, but you know what? We're uh, good first steps. Look at that! Look, look at that pose. And where's our where's our other friend? Where'd you go, buddy? Where did they go? Well, use the easy method to find them. Uh, animals, Denali, right? Oh, still just lying down over here, relaxing. Now, I don't know. They're confident around humans, right? So I suppose the barrier doesn't have to be one way. We could make it... Uh, well, I guess I have to change it. He set a time. Because they're confident. So, so 
I mean, it's a good idea to allow them to have spaces to hide. What if we, uh, what if we made this just glass? I just feel like it's such a, it's, it's nicer for the animals. No, don't, I, I think so at least. Do a 50-50 split, half hidden. Like if they feel like being shy, they can be shy up there. If they feel like being exposed, they can come down over here. I feel like that might do the trick. Let's let's try it. Let's try it. What's the worst that could happen? If uh, if we see that they're upset, then we'll you know adjust accordingly. Go ahead and make this into glass as well. No, <laughs> not concrete. Glass. Glass, I say. There we go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, crowds are coming through. We need to make sure that our education boards are all in place and they're all not talking about Bengal tigers because that's what the blueprint originally was. Uh, red kangaroo, please and thank you. And over here as well, a red kangaroo. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll sure we'll do well for, uh, for donations and stuff when we put all the education and everything down. Oh, great, of course. It wouldn't be the addition of a new animal. <laughs> Without a little bit of pooping. Without a little bit of pooping. Alright, buddy. Ready to call it a session? You, you, you happy with this episode? Yeah? Feeling good? Oh, oh, okay. Are those poops of approval? Is that a, 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 a poop -ful? God, whatever. Let's uh, let's call it over here, folks. I'm pretty happy with uh, how these guys, or how these ladies, I should say, are looking. Don't lie in your... Okay, do do what you want. Do, do what you want. Uh, I'm really happy with how they're looking. It's just nice to have uh, have a couple in. And let's actually, just before we do call it, just check to see if... No, still no males available, eh? Still no males available. All right, fair enough, fair enough. This is the market, yeah. Well, I'm sure they'll come through. Can't wait to get uh, the male kangaroos. Let's go ahead and also, uh, just so it's top of mind for me, I don't like, I don't like the idea of leaving this as is for now. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, we're going to need something more substantial over here as well to block this off. Uh, but yeah, our turnstiles aren't going to work anymore, it seems. So we'll have to figure out a solution for this to keep the monkeys uh, on their side of the barriers. What's going on? Oh, okay, they've just toppled their little box over. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty pleased with, uh, with today's session. I hope you all are as well. Again, this new DLC has so many parts and stuff that we haven't even begun to explore because our... Uh, our mechanic is only just starting the research over here for stars, so it should happen relatively quickly. Uh, we're going to start seeing some scenery right off the bat, and then it's just blueprints, which really uh, we don't even need to. So it's not that long of a wait until we have access to all the scenery pieces. Uh, but I'm already pleased with like the pathing and all that stuff. It looks really nice, and just with a little bit of uh, you know finagling with some of the older pieces, we've been able to create some uh, nice referential art, I think. Uh, but yes, next session will conclude our uh, kangaroo space, which, um, word. Pooping while I was watching you was a very kangaroo thing to do. There we go. God, I can't sometimes, honestly. Um, I can't help myself. It's a problem. Where was I? Right, next session, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, conclude the uh the the space over here it feels like there isn't all that much i mean i don't i think what we'll probably do is during like our management session uh we'll put down all the education boards all of the uh, like you know education audio and stuff as well uh put down some more stalls we'll decorate the stalls as well just need to figure out again i'm waiting for those australia pieces to unlock we'll decorate the stalls after that and look at that the atms being used as well um and then maybe we already are ready to add a new animal really no. We'll hop back to South America and get our jaguars in? Or or do we add another Australian animal? We could also do Africa. But I, I know there's a lot of passion for jaguars uh, and of course the new DLC. So I'm looking to the comments to see what y'all want to see. Just let me know. I'll uh, I'll gauge interest level reading through the comments and uh, and I'll uh, I'll make a call. Man, all right, cool. Enough of me rambling. Let's uh, let us indeed yes now call it a session, folks. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, you know what to do. Um, don't just, you know, poo in response. Instead, let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below if this episode brought you joy. Folks, as always, it's big. I'm quite pleased. Wow, yeah, I, you know, I like it. I like that it's, it's a, this massive, like, monument almost.
But anyway, as I was saying, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.